This machine makes the dark star. Come on! Kinda. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you what I mean. So this is a CNC grinder, which is way different than this. So it's similar to this, but not quite. Now this is cool, but still not it. So this, not even close. Now this is more my style, but we didn't start with million dollar machines like this S31. So let's take a trip back in time and talk about how grinding came about and its impact on the world. Grinding is a process of using a rotating abrasive wheel to remove material. The wheel spins at several thousand RPMs against the workpiece to produce precise parts. Did you know that we've been using stones as tools for thousands and thousands of years? From the caveman using black obsidian to make knives and spears to go out and hunt, mammoths and saber-toothed tigers with, to creating steam engines and even rockets that went to the moon. After we made knives and spears using black obsidian, we moved forward to growing our own food, which in turn brought about the millstone, which was a piece of granite that ground up grain into flour. This changed the way we hunted and gathered. While we were making bread out of our flour, we were also using bones and shells as makeshift needles so we can stitch up our clothing. Now fast forward to about 4000 BC in the discovery of metal, we improved the needle. So we used to just rub the metal onto a rock. Later on in the 1400s, Leonardo da Vinci actually developed the first concept of a grinding machine. Now why would Leonardo da Vinci need a grinding machine? Well, he was developing a convex lens for his telescope. Convex lenses make light rays converge. This means that when you look through the lens, far away objects look closer than they are. Now these are the type of lenses we use in binoculars and telescopes to this day. Around the same time as da Vinci, King Henry VIII actually had a master needle maker known as the London Master. So the London Master was able to create just one needle a day on average. Back then needles were so valuable that they were kept as a household valuable. A few hundred years later in 1760, the Industrial Revolution began. Along with the steam engine, telegram, and cotton gin, needle production skyrocketed. So the production workers making these needles were known as pointers. These pointers could grind up to 100 needles at a time in as many as 10,000 an hour, which in an eight hour workday translates to 80,000 needles. So the Industrial Revolution paved the way for mass production. By the time World War II started in 1939, grinding was an essential part in wartime manufacturing. World War II brought about inventions such as synthetic rubber, the Jeep, the atomic bomb, and even duct tape. We solidified new technologies such as radar, computers, penicillin, and high efficiency engines. So post-World War II, we started improving rocket engines, and this began the race to the moon. 10, nine, Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Then in 1969, Apollo 11 put the first man on the moon. The rocket we used on that spacecraft created 32 million horsepower and burned 6,000 pounds of fuel every second. Okay, Neil, we continue coming down the ladder now. Time to step off the land now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Crucial components of that rocket were made using a grinding machine. Components like the turbine blade, combustion chamber, injector plates, and pump components. These were all made by using grinding as a part of the manufacturing process.
For manual grinders, we innovated to computer numerical control grinders, or CNC grinders, and that's how we got to today. In this million dollar machine from United Grinding, the Studer S31 is capable of grinding ball screws and control valves and even a camshaft for your car or a V22 tilt rope. You remember the London Master? He made one part a day, but now we can make up to 6,000 needles a minute, which translates to 3 million needles a day. So grinding is a huge part of the manufacturing process. Everywhere you look, something's probably been ground. All right, let's talk about wheels. So wheels come in all different widths, sizes, and abrasives. Each one is built specifically for your grinding needs. This is aluminum oxide wheel, and this is a vetrified diamond wheel. Each one of these wheels has a specific purpose. Come here, come here, come here. You can find each one of these wheels at a discounted price on titansofcnctooling.com. All right, let's talk about the Dark Star we discussed earlier. Now, if you've seen Top Gun, you understand that the Dark Star is an incredible feat in manufacturing, even though it might not be possible just yet. So Mach 10 might not be possible for a manned aircraft just yet, but machines like this help us get one step closer to achieving that goal. The landing gear is a critical part to any aircraft. Modern manufacturing uses carbide HVOF coated shafts. They get turned, then they get HVOF coated, and then they come back to the grinder to get finished. Now this landing gear is just one of many ground components that makes this aircraft possible. Lockheed Martin, if you need help finishing the Dark Star, you know where to find us. So that's a brief synopsis of grinding and how we got to where we're at today. So I want to know what you guys think. Where are we going to be at in another 100 years? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you give the video a like, hit the join button, and check out our Discord. We'll see you on the next one.